Tell me about how my high school principal tried to date me after I graduated. TW, if you think this is gross, don't watch. And disclaimers is not my story time. It's been 10 years since this happened, but when I was in high school, I was really popular. I was in the cheerleading squad, the badminton team, the volleyball team, and drama club. All the teachers knew me and I got along with almost all the students. I never had any problems with girls or guys. My high school principal was a huge history buff, and so was I. One day I went to his office and asked him if I could start a history club. He was really impressed by this and he said yes. I started asking students if they wanted to join and most Mostly it was only boys, and these were the boys that I knew had a crush on me, but I made a promise to my parents that I would focus solely on school and not boys. So that meant no boyfriends for me, and I was totally fine with that. I wasn't boy crazy or anything, I really just wanted to get into a good college and make my parents proud. After I formed the club, the principal asked me if he could sit in on some of the sessions. I said, of course. Our history club would get together every Wednesday, and he would always show up without fail. I mean, obviously, I thought that he was interested in history, and he just wanted to share this experience with us, but clearly I was wrong. After a few weeks, things were getting a little strange. When it was my turn to read, I would always notice him staring at me. And he also brought up the fact that there were only boys in the club. I explained to him that they probably just had a crush on me and that at least it was a way to get them into the club. He told me I needed to find girls because I was too much of a distraction for the boys. But the way that he said it just sounded like he was really jealous. I did my best to get girls in the club, but literally nobody wanted to join. After a few days, I realized that maybe the best thing for me was just to cancel the club. I was already in so many other clubs and I didn't want to sacrifice my grades. I basically told the guys that we weren't going to have the club anymore and they all said that was totally fine but when i told the principal he flipped out he started yelling at me and told me that if i didn't keep the club going that i would never make it in life um he said i wasn't being responsible and that i was letting down the club so then i was basically forced into continuing the club but then things got even stranger he started showing up to every single get together and every time that it was over he would ask me if he could walk me to my car I mean, at first I thought he was just doing it so that I could be careful, I guess. But we were still on school property and I'm pretty sure nothing was going to happen to me. That's when he started asking me if I had a boyfriend or if I liked any boys. Part 2 is up. Part 2 of how my high school principal tried to date me after I graduated. Trigger warning, if you find this subject gross, please don't watch. And disclaimer, this is not my story time. That's when my principal started asking me if I was dating any boys or if I had any crushes on boys. I obviously felt very uncomfortable when he asked me this, so I simply answered no. Then he told me that I could be honest with him. That's when I told him that I made my parents a promise because I was so close to graduating high school and avoid any distractions like boys. That's when he said that I was an amazing woman and that he wished more of the female students were like me. I quickly got in my car and went home. By the way, I was two months away from graduating from high school. Now this is when things start to get really, really weird. I started seeing him around everywhere in school. Our school was pretty big, but I kept bumping into him everywhere. Every time I would see him, he would be like, ho ho, are you stalking me? I would laugh it off and continue walking. One day after history club, he asked me to come to his office with him. He said that he had a surprise for me. He took me to his office and gave me a book on history. I thanked him and tried to leave as quickly as possible, but then he said, don't you like it? So I stood there having to pretend that I was happy that he gave me this book when in actuality it made me really uncomfortable that's when he said that he had seen me in the library reading a book on world war ii and that he just wanted to surprise me with the same book so this was already letting me know two things number one he's watching me around school and at the library and number two i'm not noticing when he's watching me I was so creeped out, but I managed to keep my cool. I said thank you again and basically ran away. For the rest of that week, I tried to avoid him as much as I could. I didn't go anywhere near his office, and I avoided the library, which was one of my favorite places in the school. At this point, graduation was only a week away. I was totally wrapped up in my studies that I actually forgot about the principal. Until one day, I get a friend request from him on Facebook. At first, I thought it was weird, but then I accepted because I figured, well, I'm graduating, so I'm not really going to be seeing him anymore. Five minutes after I accepted his friend request, I get this really long message from him praising me, saying all these great things about me. I didn't know how to respond, so I simply said thanks. Finally, the day of graduation came and I was forced to see him face to face. That's when he told me that he actually had another gift for me. That's when he hands me an envelope with a blank check. He had the biggest smile on his face. I told him I couldn't accept it and he got mad. Part three. Is Part 3 of how my high school principal tried to date me after I graduated. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. After he hands me the blank check, I look at it and tell him that I simply cannot accept it. That's when he gets really angry, snatches the check from me, and tells me that he'll see me later. After the graduation ceremony, I was so happy and I was with my family. That's when he walks up behind me and asks me to keep the check. My family is watching this whole thing go down, by the way. I look at him and say, thank you, but no. He then introduces himself to my family. But of course, he doesn't bring up the whole check thing. We all say goodbye and my family and I go have dinner. That very night, he sends me a message on Facebook again saying that he shouldn't have given me the check. 
and he felt like he had crossed the line. I actually felt really bad, so I replied asking him to not feel bad. A week later, I get a text message from him. He said that he took the liberty of looking up my phone number and that he actually really wanted to speak to me. He asked if we could meet up for a coffee, and I said yes, unfortunately. We meet up at the coffee shop, and as soon as we sit down, he starts to confess his feelings for me. He said that I was basically his dream girl and that all he wanted was a wife like me. And he also asked me if I would ever consider dating him. I was actually too stunned to speak. As soon as he realized I wasn't saying yes, he asked me not to say anything, got up and left. I ran home and told my parents everything. My parents were really angry. My dad went straight to the cops. The cops told my dad that they had complaints from other students. He apparently did the same thing to them and asked them out once they graduated. And guess what? One of them said yes. The cops even investigated him after. My boyfriend has a longtime female friend who's clearly into him and I don't know what to do. This is going to sound like the typical insecure girlfriend, but I promise it's not like that. My boyfriend and I have been together for over six months and he's really great. He has a friend that he's had for years who is a girl. Normally, I'm not the type to be all like, you're not allowed to hang out with a single girl alone. But I'm considering telling my boyfriend that he's not allowed to hang out with this girl alone. This girl is obviously so into him and she definitely wants me to know she's coming for him. She keeps saying stuff like, you don't know him like I do yet. Or, we used to go to that place together all the time long before you guys started dating. She also had cute pet names for him and I didn't like it and as soon as I heard it, I told my boyfriend I didn't like it and he made her stop. Oh my gosh, Josh, remember when we went on a hike, just the two of us? That was the best day. I asked her straight up if she was into him and her response pissed me off. She was like, I know it's intimidating how close he and I are, but don't worry. You're the girlfriend. I'm just a friend, right? With a smug smile on her face. I got so mad, but I couldn't talk to my boyfriend about it. I want to tell him to cut her out of his life so bad, but I don't know if I can do that. My boyfriend's dad passed away two years ago with a heart condition. He told me that his dad was his best friend growing up, so it hit him really hard. That's why he says she's like a sister to him. That's why I don't know what to do. I already asked him to set boundaries like she can't text late at night or come over to his place unannounced all the time and not interrupting our alone time. He was the only family my boyfriend had. Apparently, this girl really helped him get through it. She apparently was there for him throughout the whole thing. My boyfriend doesn't realize that she's into him and I kind of don't blame him on that because all of her flirts are subtle enough that he doesn't realize but enough to get me riled up. I know my boyfriend isn't into her at all and he's completely friendzoned her but it's still so frustrating. I hate to admit it but she's so good at getting under my skin and I don't know what to do. I really need some advice. Story time about how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. This is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. My now husband, who I actually ended up marrying, we met through a dating app exactly one year ago. From the beginning, he totally loved bombed me. After we gave each other our phone numbers, he would text me every single day at night. He would call me beautiful and give me so many compliments. Some part of me knew that he was love bombing me and that it was wrong, but I also enjoyed it because I hadn't been treated like that in a very long time. He asked me out on a date and we actually lived two hours away from each other. So he made the trip all the way down to where I lived. We had an amazing date. We talked for three hours. Then we went to the beach and stayed there for about six hours. We told each other our life stories and he told me that he was looking to settle down and not just someone to date casually. This was obviously my goal too, so it was perfect. We were really compatible and we made each other laugh a lot. One of the first things that he made very clear to me was that he had money and lots of it. He owned two companies and was starting a third one. He took care of his entire family and even bought his parents a house. After dating for two weeks, he asked me to be his girlfriend and of course I said yes. He would come down to visit me every single weekend. I was in nursing school at the time and he even helped me pay for my education. I mean, this man was perfect, or at least I thought. After almost a month, he started talking about marriage. I knew I liked him a lot and I was definitely falling in love with him, but I just wasn't ready to talk about marriage. And I told him that. He said that he was really disappointed that I wouldn't consider marrying him. I told him that it wasn't that and maybe even date for a few years before we got engaged. This is when he got really upset and out of nowhere, he just yells out, I may not have a few years to live. He then pretended to break down and start crying, but no tears were coming out of his eyes. I knew it was strange behavior, but I couldn't believe that he would lie about something like that. He explained to me that he had a terminal disease, but wouldn't tell me what it was and told me that the doctors only gave him a year to live. Obviously, I was shocked. I couldn't even stop crying. Then he told me that that's why he wanted to get married to me. He wanted to get married and pregnant before he passed. Then he pulls out a huge diamond ring. This man was asking me to marry him after only a month of dating. And unfortunately, I said yes. Part two is up. Part two of how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. I was sending me an Instagram. After he told me that he had that terminal disease, 
I couldn't say no to him, so I accepted the engagement ring, but it would be the biggest mistake of my life. He was so happy about us getting engaged, but all I could do was cry because he told me he had only one year left to live. Before I knew it, he hired a wedding planner, and he even started planning our engagement party. Mind you, we had only been dating for a month. This is around the time that he became really possessive. He was getting more and more jealous of my friends, and if I was going to hang out with family or friends, he would guilt trip me into staying with him because he only had a year left to live. I felt like I was trapped. We were both super involved in the planning of the wedding, and it was actually really nice for me to have that time with him, but then other times he would get really jealous. For example, I have a group of friends and we usually have dinner every Friday night. My friends and I are really close and when they found out about my engagement, they flipped out and told me that I shouldn't get married. Somehow my fiancé caught wind of this and told me that I couldn't hang out with my friends anymore, especially the guys in the group. He also made me promise that I wouldn't speak to them after he passed away. Even my family didn't want me to get married to him. My family would question me all the time, asking me what his terminal disease was, and to be honest, I couldn't even tell them. Every time I brought up the subject to my fiancé, he would get upset and ask me if I didn't believe him. I told him my family and I just wanted to know what it was that he had. He told me that he had a tumor. He didn't say where or if he was getting any treatment, and I basically knew not to ask him about it again. I was so stressed because my family didn't want me to marry him, my friends didn't want me to marry him, and now I couldn't even see my friends, and I even had to drop out of school so that I could spend all my time with him. Now don't get me wrong, I was in love with him, but knowing now that he was going to pass away, part of me was putting up a wall so that I wouldn't be so devastated when he passed. I mean, what else could I do? The wedding came around really quickly. My dress was beautiful, the venue was absolutely stunning, the food was delicious, and my entire family and friends were there. It was actually one of the happiest days of my life. We had an amazing wedding and the reception was so much fun. I basically danced with my husband all night long. For our honeymoon, we went to Europe. Of course, we stayed at the best hotels, we would go shopping and eating at the best restaurants, but he became even more controlling and jealous. If a man happened to pass by and I looked at him, he would get upset at me. Anytime I got on my phone to do anything, he would ask me what I was doing, and every time I would call my mom, he would get really annoyed. It got to the point where I stopped calling my family because I didn't want him to get upset. Part 2 is up. Part 3 of how my boyfriend lied about having a terminal disease so that he could marry me. This is not my story time, I sent me on Instagram. During the honeymoon, he became more and more jealous. So finally, when we got back home, I asked him about his disease. He never looked or acted sick. He never went to the doctor or even took any medication. The more I would ask about his terminal disease, the angrier he would get. Finally, one day, I told him that I didn't believe him. That's when he locked me in our bedroom for two hours. He sat outside the door and told me the truth. He knew that I was too good for him and that I would never marry him, so he knew he had to make up a lie to actually marry me, and that a terminal disease was the first thing that came to mind. He knew I was studying to be a nurse and that I would fall hard for that. I told my family and friends. They said they knew that something was off with him. He keeps apologizing and wants us to stay together. He pays for everything and I have absolutely zero money and no job. But he's still controlling. I feel bad for him and I can tell that he really loves me. I think I should ask for a separation. What do you guys think? What should I do? period blood in her drink for revenge. So I used to be friends with this girl, let's call her Mackenzie. I've been friends with her my whole life and we got along pretty well. One time we were joking around how we usually do and she called my mom the n-word with the hard r. I told her not to joke like that and that I didn't appreciate it. She said she didn't care and proceeded to do it anyways. 
felt like slapping the crap out of her. But I ended up going home. She ended up texting me saying she was sorry, begging for my forgiveness, and I forgave, thinking people could change. So we hung out at the mall and this boy came up to me with his group of friends and asked me if he could chill with us because he thought I was cute. I agreed. Everything was fine, we were having a good time, but Mackenzie was one of those girls who typically switched up whenever boys were around because she's boy crazy and always wants to make herself look better. She brought up embarrassing moments from when I was young, such as I used to pee on my bed, and that I shaved my eyebrows off. She always did this in front of boys trying to make herself look better. I relaxed before I got hyped and just let her. One of the guys said that wasn't cool and I should stick up for myself, but I told him I'm acting calm because I have the best revenge in mind. So then after that, we said our goodbyes and went to my house. We had a good time, but then she was hungry and asked for cherry Kool-Aid. And you will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two. So I made some nachos with ground beef, cheese, and salsa, and made a whole pitcher of Kool-Aid. I brought it to my room since I have a table in my room. I set the food down and she didn't even say thank you, might I add. She also said the cheese was cheap tasting while looking me up and down. I said I was going to the bathroom real quick since I needed to take out my tampon and put on a pad. So she asked me if on the way I could grab her some more Kool-Aid. I gave her a dirty look and took the cup. She usually drinks all of my Kool-Aid in one day because she's impulsive with consuming food and beverages. She's selfish, to put it short. I brought her cup to the laundry room because it was across the downstairs bathroom and I had to pee badly. Then I got the crazy idea for karma. At first, I was going to sprinkle laxatives into her food, but this one was better and more evil. I went into the guest bathroom, took my tampon out and swirled it in her cup for a bit. I squeezed it too. Then I put a fresh pad on, poured in the Kool-Aid and added a tad more sugar in case it was salty and went back to the room. Here you go, enjoy, I said as she laughed and drank it. I stared at her the whole time and smiled. After that, she went home and I blocked her on everything. I'm definitely never going to tolerate a racist disrespecting me and my mother. Hopefully she sees this story someday and learns her lesson. Follow for more story times. She tried to kill me over a boy. I used to be friends with this girl, let's call her Erica. I met Erica off Yubo during 2017 and she was your typical cute alt girl who wore cinnamon roll hats, fishnets, dark makeup, and dark clothes. She was really pretty in my opinion. I was the opposite though. I liked Forever 21, Hollister, the mainstream stores. I would say I was the ideal beauty standard. So we were talking for about 5 months and decided to meet up. We both lived in New York City but I lived in Manhattan and she was in the Bronx so she just came to see me since she's never been in Manhattan. We ended up meeting and gave each other the biggest hug. It was so fun. Went to a cat cafe, we went to a big mall, shopping plaza, etc. I asked her if she wanted to sleep over at my house and she said sure. We went to my apartment, took our showers and got ready for bed. She was swiping on Yubo and saw this cute boy so she decided to text him. They were getting it on. So she decided I was her bestie now and that I had to meet him so she put us in a group chat and we started talking. He introduced himself to me and he seemed like a pretty cool guy. He was even cute, I'm not going to lie. I congratulated her, gassed her up and told her that he's cute and she's lucky. You will not believe what she said next. Come back for part two. She said thank you, but what she said next literally should have been a red flag. She said, ever take him from me and I'll kill you. Literally. And she looked serious and I looked uncomfortable. And then she laughed and said she was joking and slapped my arm in a playful manner. I laughed, but something was telling me something weird was going on, but whatever. So we ended up just watching a bunch of horror movies and she was just really touchy and immediately felt comfortable with me. I felt uncomfortable, but I didn't say anything. After that, she went home and we continued texting. One day, I got a DM from the guy she was talking to. He was asking me about her and asked if she was loyal and I said yes, she is, and gassed her up. After that, he started flirting with me and acting weird. He was calling me cute and said I had a nice body. I started screen recording just in case he tried to pull something stupid. I told him to stop and that this was inappropriate and he needs to tell Erica before I tell her. He said he was sorry and begged for me not to say anything. I told him I was going to give him 24 hours to say something before I do, and to never speak her again and that he was a scumbag. So one day I was at the salon and got a text from Erica and you will not believe what it said. Come back for part three. So Erica called me and said she wanted to meet me real quick and asked where I was. It was 6 p.m. so it was getting pretty dark, but I agreed to meet with her anyways. We met in the dark and she looked pissed. I went to give her a hug and she pushed me back and pulled out a gun on me. So you've been texting my man behind my back? What the F did I tell you? I started crying and hyperventilating, telling her I didn't do anything. She didn't believe me and told me to get on the floor. She held the gun to my head and I covered my face. She told me to count to 10 and then get up. I counted to 10 and when I got up, she walked away. After that, I blocked her on everything, blocked the dude, and continued with my life. During 2019, she contacted me telling me she was sorry and that she didn't know he lied. I sent her their screen recording and cursed her out and told her she was worthless. And she told me the reason why she was so over defensive was because she was secretly in love with me the whole time and still was till that day. When she confessed, I blocked her on everything and moved on with my life. I still haven't spoken to her until this day, and I am in a healthy, normal relationship. Lesson learned, Yubo isn't the best place to meet people. Follow me for more story times, and feel free to follow my Insta. 
I am the murderer to my brother's girlfriend's baby. So a little bit of a backstory. My brother got this girlfriend, let's call her Emily. So I liked Emily a lot. At first I thought she was pretty great and all. She was practically the perfect girlfriend. She brought him goodie bags whenever he was down, gave him massages, she even helped us plan a surprise birthday party. She was his rock and she always managed to make him feel better when he was down. He even went as far as talking about marrying her. Then one day they had a really bad argument and she stormed out of her house. I asked my brother what was wrong and he yelled at me for asking and went into his room and started throwing stuff. All everyone could hear was screaming and throwing things. I asked my mother what I should do, and she asked for me to give him space and make him feel better after. She also told me to try and talk to him after he's calm, since I was the closest to him. I agreed and I took a nap in my room, since I knew it'd take a while. He had a temper. So after that, I went to his room and knocked. He opened the door and let me in. His room was so messy, but I helped him clean it after. I asked him what was wrong and why Emily stormed out of the room like that. And you will not believe what he told me. Come back for part two. He told me that he potentially caught her cheating. I was so mad. I was about to text her, but he told me to stop because I couldn't be wrong. I asked him why he came up with an accusation like this, and he said they were watching a movie and chilling and stuff. And then her phone kept buzzing like crazy. He ended up grabbing her phone as a joke, but she was so possessive over it. More possessive than usual. Then he glanced while she was fighting for it and saw it a baby. And he asked what it was. She said she didn't know why her cousin kept texting her like that. He said he wanted to believe her, but he couldn't understand why she was so possessive over the phone. They then got into an argument, and she then said she wished she never dated him and ran out. I honestly didn't like her anymore. I told him I thought he should break up with her, but he didn't know and he was torn. He was in love with her, which I get, but doesn't excuse her cheating. A week later, she comes back and they are good. I told Emily I wanted to talk to her and she looked nervous. I told her if I found out that she's cheating on him, there's going to be a problem. No BS. I'm 100% serious. I nodded her head and walked away. I smirked and went back to my room. Everything was fine after that. They went to their normal selves. My sister was holding a gender reveal, and you will not believe what happened there. Come back for part three. So my brother invites Emily, and that's kind of annoying because it's a family event, but my mom insisted and said she was family, even though I didn't think so. So the day of the baby shower, he brings Emily, and I just ignore her. They did a gender reveal, and it was a boy and a girl, since she surprised us with twins. We were so happy, and we hugged her in celebration. Then Emily and my brother started fighting again. They started bickering. But I was near them, so I was the only one able to hear them. Then after that, it got louder, and she pushed him while they were standing up, and everyone looked. Then I pushed her and told her to back up and relax. Then she slapped my face and we ended up fighting. I was smaller than her so she had an advantage over me and she ended up beating me up. People had to separate us. After I screamed and ran into the house and came up with a bat and hit her back. She screamed in pain and told me to stop and I hit her two times in the stomach. She then coughed and blood started running down her legs. I paused and everyone was confused. Ambulance came for her and I went back inside. No one talked to me because they knew I was mad. They ended up breaking up because she had a miscarriage and she never told them she was pregnant. I didn't mean to, but you weren't going to sit here and hit my brother. Karma's a bee. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram if you can too. He cheated on me with two family members. So I met this guy, let's call him Oliver. I met him during my college years and now we're engaged since we clicked so well. He was a pretty great guy. He was a little dull sometimes, but he always remembers the small details and that's what matters. So one day I came home from work and I set my bags down and everything. Then I saw a pair of underwear on our couch. It was hot pink. I don't like hot pink for one and I never wear cheeks or underwear. I tried calling him and he didn't answer. I looked for anything else but I didn't find it. The underwear seemed like it just came out of the wash, which is weird. He came home and I asked him what this was. He said it was my underwear. I told him he can't play that game on me, but he made up this really good lie which I forgot at the time and he said, Do you remember that one time we went to Walmart and you got the pack of underwear but you didn't like one of them? That's what it was. And I paused and then said, oh, because it made a lot of sense at the time and I was too tired to focus so I just brushed it off. We ended up sitting and watching a movie and I saw his phone buzzing. When he went up to the bathroom, I looked through his phone and he was texting my sister. Him and my sister talked about meeting up at her place tomorrow. You will not believe what happened next. Come back for part two.